my family we are back in the kitchen and we are going to be making yet another mediterranean basically low carb safe for all around diabetic or just everyday lifestyle so what's on the menu tonight is we are having a mediterranean greek stuffed mushroom some blackened catfish and just an ordinary side salad now my salad i will probably have the leftover orange and hubby will have an ordinary spring mix salad mix or he may even opt just to have um, cucumbers and tomatoes so either way it goes it's a secondary vegetable or well, actually a third vegetable added to our fish meal so we're going to get started i'm going to be showing you how to make the homemade version of blackened seasoning i don't I try to avoid the store-bought if possible for the simple reason there's too many hidden sugars I'm finding in a lot of our food anymore. Not only that, there's hidden corn starch and corn syrups and so many things we just don't need. So I try to go as natural, homemade as possible. And then we're going to uh, start on the mushrooms first. Excuse me. So. With, I'll set everything up and we will start with our mushrooms and then move on over to our blackened fish. This will, should be a very quick meal. Again, within 30 minutes to 40 minutes, you should have a complete meal for your family. So let's get started. Okay, y'all, so our filling. Now, the green that is used in this technically is spinach. Now, I have a little bit of spinach from my spring mix. But I'm also using some of the leaves that I have on our farm. One would be using Swiss chard, and the other is I'm using a couple of the Jamaican sorrel leaves. They're a mixture flavor between um, spinach and a lemon flavor. So I'm just going to add that in here with our greens. Now I am actually doing this with two large portobello mushroom caps. So this filling is what's going to be on here. I'm going to set that aside. So I'm going to first start out with about a half teaspoon of oregano. We're making a small batch. I'm going to use a pinch of red pepper flakes just for a slight kick of uh, spice. Not a whole lot of this. I'm going to use some sun-dried tomatoes. I'm going to approximately use one or two. I'm going to see how big these are. This is with olive oil in it. So I'm going to shred these up a little bit and add this to it as well. And we're just going to add just a little bit of this just for the flavor balance of it and that's going to be just enough right there there's one now i have a few um, cloves of crushed garlic i'm going to add some you can add feta cheese again my husband doesn't particularly like it if it were me i'd have added it but this will work just as well i'm actually using an herbed goat cheese so this will blend beautifully with mushrooms so i'm just going to actually pour some of this in here break it up I'm going to use this whole thing because it's going to be creamy inside of that mushroom. Oh my gosh, y'all. It's going to be so good. So I'm just going to break some of this in here. I'm going to use some of this for topping it as well. Need a little bit more than this. And then I'm going to add some of this Gouda cheese. And let me get my hands washed. Thank you, hubby. He went and did my pepper for me. So, I'm going to put that aside right now. Sorry, y'all. Um, now I'm going to add some Gouda to this. 
Again, I'm going to use the rest of this for sprinkling on top of the mushrooms with the rest of the um, uh, <laughs> goat cheese. And we're going to add some salt and pepper. This is to taste. Drizzle this with olive oil. We're going to mix it together and stuff our mushrooms with it. Now I'm going to get a roasting pan. I've got my oven preset for 350 degrees as we're going to bake this. So I'm going to get a small pan, set this up to stuff our mushrooms with. Okay, because this is a dark pan, I'm going to line it with aluminum foil. And I'm going to lay my mushrooms down nicely. Now I'm going to get something to stir this mix up. We're going to mix it really well. Matter of fact, I am actually going to go a step further than this recipe, and I am going to actually add some pine nuts to this. This is what's nice about the Mediterranean, is you can really change so many flavors and so many textures. And I do believe that at this point, a little bit of pine nuts mixed in with this mixture would be absolutely amazing. So we're going to go ahead and sprinkle some of that in there as well. Just a little bit. That's optional, y'all. I just happened to have some, so I thought I'd add it. I am getting ready. I'm pre-soaking at the moment some um, dried chickpeas because I have never tried falafels, and I'm wanting to try it. So I am preparing my chickpeas for the tw next 24 hours to make some falafels. When I do, I will also make that uh, video for you as well. So now we've got everything mixed up. We're just going to go ahead and stuff our mushrooms now. And it's pretty much liberally. Just put everything on the top of this. Pack it down really good. I might want to be able to move, remove some of this lining so I can put my um, seat and my, my stuffing inside of it. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so now we cleaned out the centers where I can actually get these fillings filled in this mushrooms. I'm actually going to pack these down to fill them in really well. This is enough ingredients. And notice I didn't really give much in measurements because this is based by your preference per se. So um, go by your flavor. Go by your amount. This is for two people. So I will try to go ahead and put in the description enough that I made for two in there for you on this recipe. I'm just going to go ahead and finish taking a piece of this. Oh, this smells so good. After working on the farm today, I am quite hungry, so I'm just going to go ahead and make sure I have the rest of this. Now I'm just going to finish topping it off with my cheese. Divide what's left of my goat cheese between each mushroom. And we're basically going to heat this um, until everything is heated through and the mushroom is tender. This will not take very long at all. Okay, so that's that one. And now I'm going to take it with the rest of the Gouda, lay it on top. And that is our stuffed mushrooms to go with our fish tonight. This mushroom is going to pop with so much flavor, I can promise you. So now I'm going to turn around and get my hands washed. And I'm going to get this in the oven. And I'm going to start with the blackened seasoning and our fish next. 
Okay, so for our blackened seasoning, we have one teaspoon of white pepper. This is actually, I didn't have actually white pepper, so I'm using medley. So that's one teaspoon of this. I need one teaspoon of cumin. Two teaspoons of salt. I'm using Himalayan sea salt. One tablespoon of smoked paprika. Okay, so it calls for one teaspoon of cayenne. I've told you that I have fresh cayenne, so I'm using, for me, I'm going to use about a quarter teaspoon because this fresh is like really potent. So I'm going to get my cayenne right quick. Okay, I currently have some fresh that we just started um, growing again too because our stock is getting low. So and I may end up even using less than this. So I'm going to use about an eighth this can get pretty strong and we're almost low so thank God for the new that we grew and I'm gonna dry it out and turn it into powder um, I now need one teaspoon of regular black pepper I'm using cracked you guys can use whatever kind you prefer really Uh, two teaspoons of thyme. Uh, two teaspoons of dried oregano. Now I'm going to be getting ready to do my fresh oregano outside and dehydrate it to store up so I'm not buying anymore and I will turn it into flakes like this. I need one tablespoon now of onion powder and two teaspoons of garlic. to refill my garlic bin too. I'm getting ready to do a major um, buying of garlic so I can restock this for my pantry this year. Oh yeah, that was one tablespoon of onion powder. When I do that, I will show you all how to make your own onion powder and your own garlic powder too. Because I will be running out before the winter's up and we definitely need some. Now I'm just going to go ahead and mix all these seasonings together really well. I'm going to get a bigger bowl and then I'm going to show you what we're going to do next. Now we're not going to use all of this on this fish. I will have enough to store away, label it, and mark it as um, blackened seasoning. So we'll be right back. Okay, so now we're going to prepare the, our pan. I'm going to start with getting some olive oil in our pan. We are going to actually pan uh, sear our fish. I'm going to start out with olive oil and then I am going to give it that buttery flavor which most um, blackened fish has that butter only I'm not using regular butter I'm going to be using our homemade ghee. So I'm going to use healthier fats within this meal. So I'm just going to get this heated. Then I'm going to go adding about a tablespoon of ghee to this. And in the meantime, I'm going to prepare our um, catfish. So I'm dampening off right now, drying it off. Because I'm going to be able to season both of these fillets. They're beautiful. This has been fresh caught fillets locally here. farm, um, Actually farm raised. So... 
we got a really good opportunity to have this done. We found a fresh fish market. We have some red snapper. We bought a red snapper where we can fillet it down. And then we bought uh, a flounder that we can fillet down. And then these pieces were already filleted for us. So we've got three beautiful fish for this week. Or we can use it towards, you know, part of next week too. But either way it goes, I've got some beautiful fish. Fresh caught from Biloxi, Mississippi and locally farm raised. Alright, so now that I'm going to add, because this started to heat up, I'm going to go ahead and add about my one tablespoon of ghee to this. That'll give that beautiful flavor, buttery flavor too. So I'm going to get my plate here, and I am going to take my seasoning, and I'm going to rub it or sprinkle it. I'm going to make a coating, basically, with this blackened seasoning all over our fish. Make it its own crust, basically, just with seasonings alone. I have never had blackened fish, so this is going to be interesting even for me. And we had some catfish, so I thought instead of just doing the typical like we always did the southern way is fry it up, I thought I'd go ahead and try it blackened and then make it with some Mediterranean style sides. Beautiful coat. I used about half of the seasoning that we made, so the other half will be put up, basically, for other meals. And you can use that for chicken or anything you want to, really. I'm just going to keep coating this fish while our oil is getting heated. Beautiful, y'all. Absolutely beautiful. I'll turn this around. Finish this off. And I'd say this is going to have a kick, but it'll be worth it. Okay. Now I'm going to take it after I got a good heck season on our fish. I take it and lay it inside of our pan right here. Again, I want to make sure this is good and seasoned and packed. So I'm going to lay this one in here. And we're going to coat this or cook this until it has the blackened on both sides and cooked all the way through. Once that is finished, I will bring you back for the final plating and supper will be served. Okay y'all, so our blackened fish, absolutely gorgeous. Internal temp, perfect, 145, actually it was about 154, so it's beautifully done. So now I'm going to take my beautiful piece of blackened fish inside here. Now for me, hubby's going to actually have some sliced tomatoes and cucumber. I'm actually going to, I sauteed up some of our farm fresh cherry tomatoes to serve on the top of mine. And then I'm going to serve it with a side of our beautiful mushrooms that we made in the oven. So I've got this and now with my side salad, I'm actually going to use my leftover orange that we had the other night so and then I will show you the final once everything is done and here we have our final dish y'all we have our cheese stuffed mushrooms absolutely amazing then we have our blackened catfish with sauteed tomatoes and then the summer orange salad that had the walnuts and cranberries this is our Mediterranean meal this is low carb, absolutely amazing flavors. I hope you enjoy this. I will put the recipe in the description below. 
I am hungry and I am fixing to go eat. So much love to each and every one of you from Parton's Heritage Homestead.